John Strutt Reilly, otherwise known as Lord Reilly, was the physicist that I was assigned. He was one of the last greatest physical uh, physicists um, who made important contributions in several fields, including electromagnetic theory, thermodynamics, and statistical mechanics. Now, throughout this presentation, I'll be using a marker because that is what they do in Khan Academy. So here is really right here. Lord Rayleigh was born on November 12th, 1842. In fact, that's only two days after my birthday. I just thought you should know. Anyways, he was born in Essex, Great Britain, and as a child, he suffered from frailty and poor health. He was actually a very sickly person throughout his whole life, and I'll talk a little about that later. Because he was so sick, his family changed his school a lot. Now, I'm not completely sure about the logic behind that, but anyways, facts on file normally doesn't fail me, so I'm just going to trust them with that. So anyways... He first started um, at Eton, and then he went on to Wimbledon Private School, and then finally he settled down at Harris School for boys. Then finally, after that, he went up to Cambridge University. He was in the Trinity College for Mathematics. Now, although Cambridge University wasn't the greatest college compared to what his contemporaries went to, it was uh, it still made him stand out among his peers there. And after he graduated, he held a fellowship until he got married in 1871 to his wife, Evelyn. Actually, he met Evelyn from his friend at Cambridge, and that friend was uh, eventually became the Prime Minister of England. Now, his occupation, as I said before, he was a physicist, a mathematician, a theorist, and experimental physicist. And he was a physicist in many different fields, including electrodynamics, thermodynamics, and statistical mechanics. Now, once his father died, he inherited so much that he had the means to exclusively work in science. Also, um, I forgot to mention, after he got married in 1871, in 1872 he got a severe rheumatic fever and had to move down to Egypt for a year. Yeah. And then after that, his father died the year after, and then he inherited a lot. Now for the guiding question. Why is the sky blue? Well, as previously mentioned, Lord Rayleigh was the one who found out. In fact, he used his theory to figure out why the sunset was red as well, as shown here. While investigating the nature of light and color in 1871, the year he got married, he discovered the physical explanation of why the sky is blue and why the sunset is red. Now, Rayleigh's reasoning was based on the fact that small particles in the atmosphere interact with and scatter the sunlight incident on them. By analyzing this process using James Clerk Maxwell's equations for the electromagnetic field, he found that the intensity of scattered radiation varies inversely with the fourth power of the wavelength. This meant that the shorter blue wavelengths of the sunlight would be scattered more efficiently than the longer red wavelengths in the sunlight. So here is a diagram. I'll change the color, you know, Khan Academy style. That's what he does. Uh, let's choose blue because the sky is blue. So yes, here's the diagram of the blue sky. Now, as I said before, he won the Nobel Prize in 1904 with William Ramsey. Um, so uh, he discovered um, uh, argon during his uh, this during his careful study of the measurement and density of different gases. Now, according to the accepted theory of that time, known as the Prout's hypothesis, all elements have atomic weights that are multiples of hydrogen and have atomic weights in integer multiples of the weight of nitrogen. However, Rayleigh's results did not support this theory. So, after many experiments, with the help of Ramsey, he found the gas argon. And argon comes from the Greek word for inactive. Now, he named it this because argon's an inert gas, and the reason chemists didn't find it was because it never reacted with any of the chemicals that they were using at the time. So in 1904, Rayleigh received the Nobel Prize for Physics, while Ramsey was awarded the Nobel Prize in Chemistry. Now, a fun fact about Lord Rayleigh was that he was an excellent instructor, and he taught up to 70 kids um, in experimental physicists, uh, uh, physics at... Uh, at Cambridge University. 
Now, the reason I put Leonard Hofstadter here, for some of you who don't get the reference, was because in CBS's sitcom uh, The Big Bang Theory, Leonard Hofstadter was an experimental physicist on the show. So, here's just an overviewing timeline of his life. He was born in November 12th. He attended Cambridge in 1861. 1871, he got married and discovered the scatter, the Rayleigh scattering. 1872, I didn't put it up here, but uh, he got the rheumatic fever and had to move down to Egypt. 1873, his father died. In 1904, he won the Nobel Prize for discovering argon. Here's my bibliography, finally. So, these two were the ones that really helped me. I didn't really use Wikipedia that much. So anyways, that's Lord Rayleigh's Life in a Nutshell. Thank you.